The Miami Heat might be in the best position out of everybody in the NBA draft coming up next month on June 26th. And we're going to break down why on this episode of Heat Digest right now. So let's get to it and break down why the Miami Heat might be in the best position out of everyone in the entire National Basketball Association. If you guys didn't know, the draft lottery was just a day ago where the Atlanta Hawks earned the number one overall pick with, I believe, the lowest odds in order to get that pick. And they still somehow pulled it off. Detroit goes another year with the worst statistical record in the NBA without getting the number one overall draft pick. But again, don't worry, or I would at least don't worry if you're Detroit fans or really anyone else, because there's a lot of really good basketball insiders and analysts that are coming out and saying, this is not going to be a great draft. At least going in into this draft, that is the message that we're hearing a lot of. And for the Miami Heat, same really position as we normally are in, that 15, the 20 range, year in and year out, we're able to have these draft picks and we don't have a lot of hype because we have to take players outside of the top 10. And again, this year in the first round, we have the 15th overall pick. And then in the second round, we have the 13th overall pick, which would really be the 43rd overall pick in the NBA draft. Now, how are we going to be in the best position out of everyone in the entire draft process at 15 and really 43, the 13th overall in the second round, obviously. But this is why. Now, on ESPN, every team is broken down and given a player. This is from ESPN, and they are given really a name that seems like to be aligned with where they currently are sitting in the draft position. Zach Eady is listed as the 14th best player available out of the entire draft on ESPN. And then if you go to this article where they go to each player and they go by each pick and really try to give the best odds and description of who that team should take at their position. For the Miami Heat, they suggested Zach Eady. If you guys don't know who Zach Eady is, you've heard me on Heat Digest call for the Miami Heat to draft this player after their the Purdue Boilmakers made it to the NCAA championship where they fell to the UConn Huskies and uh, that great team they, where they've won now two consecutive Natty Championships, you've heard me come on here and beg the Miami Heat to draft this player. Zach Eady is legit. 7'4", 300 pounds. And this is not a 7'4", where it's he's seven, he's 7 feet tall and someone who's 6'11", 6'8", is standing next to him and they're all the same height with shoes on. That's not the case. Zach Eady is a massive human being and because of that size he has great potential to put alongside bam out of bio now he is no short of talent if you see his stats here from his senior year in purdue he averaged 25 points 12 rebounds and two assists while shooting 62 percent from the field absolutely fantastic but again a lot of the reason for that boosted field goal percentage is due to the fact that he doesn't shoot jump shots closest thing to, to a jump shot he will take is a free throw where again he's not the greatest from the free throw line but again what he is good at is being a big body down near the rim his ability to rebound the basketball offensively and defensively is stellar his ability to defend the rim is really really good if you look at his box scores from the last really five games which would really would be the biggest five games of his ncaa career as a senior on a on a run to the NCAA championship where they meet up against really just a freight train of a team in the Yukon Huskies. He was averaging like 10 plus rebounds and two plus blocks in the majority of those games. Absolutely dominant. I know he does average 25 points per game. Really the first number one in the country, at least for the NC for the March madness section of things. But that was due to the fact that he was the number one option on that team. He was really the best player in the entire country this past season. And then for the description that they gave for the Miami Heat to draft Zach Eady, I couldn't agree more, more with this statement. Going on to say, Eady's positional fit alongside Bam Adebayo would be a topic of discussion in Miami. But his productivity, physicality, intensity, and team culture match would be welcomed by the Heat. Adebayo started to slowly incorporate a three-point shot into his offensive arsenal late last season and has the type of defensive versatility that could be useful alongside another big. Edie's offensive rebounding and interior scoring are skills the Heat lack, making him an attractive pick here. At 15, I would love for the Miami Heat to be able to go out 
and get someone like Zach Eady. You can start him from day one. He has a bunch of a surplus of experience as he was, again, a senior this past year down in Purdue for the Boyle, make, Boyle Makers, where he was clearly the best player in the country for the majority of the year. From start to finish, there was only one thing consistent, and that was the fact that he was most likely going to end with a double-double in some fashion, as it was an automatic thing as every time he stepped on the floor because of his dimensions, his size, his overall length. Was it's really something that you have to game plan around. Obviously, he's not the greatest offensive threat. He definitely can give you buckets and bunches due to his ability to offensive rebound. But if we were able to go out and get a big like Zach Eady, someone we wouldn't have to break the bank for to pay due to him being on a rookie contract with 15th overall pick, obviously not being in the top 10, this would be massive for the Miami Heat. Be able to move Bam out of bio back to a power forward position, which is his true position. Allow him to be that stretch four, if you will. He doesn't have to live behind the three-point line by any means. But again, the ability to stretch the floor would be greatly increased with Bam moving to that power forward position and being able to have a defensive anchor when we do play. Again, this is totally just an example, a hypothetical. When we match up against the Boston Celtics and we can put Bam out of bio on Christoph Porzingis, assuming he is there next year, we would he, when Porzingis steps out behind that three-point line, we would then not be as compromised when Bam Adebayo steps out behind that three-point line to defend on the wing, whether it be Christoph Porzingis or on switches that the offense creates for this defensive team or for this Miami Heat team on the defensive end. With Zach Eady down below, as long as he's not getting switched on to guards and forwards, he is not going to be really a liability. He has such great length and an ability to really impact all the shots with his such a, a ridiculous height and length advantage i would love to see how that plays out and i couldn't i just cannot wait to see him in a miami heat jersey before we get to the next thing let me know down in the comments if you guys would enjoy zach Eady in a miami heat jersey do you think that would be a good overall pick for the miami heat if he did fall to 15 for this miami heat squad but now the big news as this is catching a lot of hot headlines as Bronny james to miami is it a big thing is it actually going to happen we don't know now Bronny james should not be drafted in the first round i'm not saying that as a hater, I think he, I'm so, so happy and impressed that he's able and was even cleared to then be drafted to enter the draft process due to the cardiac arrest situation he was dealing with, the heart situation he was dealing with early on his in his collegiate career. Obviously, you guys know Bronny. Everyone really knows Bronny. Bronny's been, he's LeBron James' son. If you've known his name, if you've been involved in the game of basketball in any way ever since, probably the last eight to 10 years, you knew this kid's name. Bronny James, he played for the USC Trojans out in Southern California. This past season, he was a freshman. His dimensions are 6'4", 210 pounds. He averaged five points a game, 2.8 rebounds, and two assists while shooting 36.6%. Now, this is not a big surprise in the sense of him possibly coming to Miami, possibly getting drafted with that 43rd overall pick, really the 13th in the second round, due to the fact that this is not new news. Back on January 8th of this year, 2024, courtside buzz with a surplus of other media outlets reposted this saying report Miami Heat staff have already begun scouting USC guard Bronny James and have been at his games this season Bronny is averaging 6.7 points per game in 17 minutes played in just seven games played in for USC for the USC Trojans should Miami select him if he declares for the NBA draft again this is via Windhorst ESPN so Brian Windhorst, we all know who that is, as he has simply been around the game, and we see him, we hear and see his name all the time around the game of basketball, as he's really the top guy, around, along with Wojnarowski, for covering the game of basketball. Now, the last two things. The reason this is really breaking all the news and catching all the headlines is because FanDuel, this is where the odds are coming from, was posted on BR Betting, Bleacher Report Betting. This is on Instagram, Twitter, really all their social media outlets posted this when Bronny declared for the NBA draft and was announced cleared by really for a physical in order to declare that he was healthy enough to enter the draft and play professional basketball. Obviously, the Lakers, where LeBron James is currently under contract until he opts out. If he de if he decides to, obviously, there's a window opening up here soon on whether and when he can obviously make that decision or not. And then followed by the Knicks and the Miami Heat, both listed at plus 1,400. Again, these odds presented by FanDuel, then reposted by BR Betting, Bleacher Report Betting on their socials. So, 
there's a big connection here. Whether or not Bronny ends up in Miami is to be seen. Obviously, we don't know if he will even be drafted in the top 40 picks. Obviously, there's a big headline around his name and possibly influencing his dad, LeBron James, to then come play alongside with him. Whether or not that actually happens, we are not really sure if it's concrete or not. Obviously, we've heard LeBron say on multiple occasions he wants to play with his kid. That would be a big milestone. He wants to do it before he elects to retire. Obviously, that has been the entire no that we've taken from LeBron James but recently in recent news he has said that he's not going to just flat out just force his way to another team in order to play with Bronny James at least immediately because it seems like even if Bronny's drafted to a team that may not suit LeBron James or may not be able to bring in someone like LeBron or just not the great situational fit it seems like LeBron is going to be along around long enough that he may be able to play with Bronny in another place elsewhere again you can't really doubt out Le doubt LeBron James as he's been in the game of basketball for now a hundred years. This guy is like 92 years old and he's still one of the best players in the world year in and year out. And again, credit to LeBron not taking anything away from him. I hope he gets to fulfill his dream of playing with Bronny James because that would be so cool. Someone who was came into the NBA at 18 out of high school and he gets to play this long, illustrious career. He's in the conversation for the go, this and that. He goes to championships, he wins championships, and he rounds out his career, goes into the sunset, playing with his son, Bronny James. That like that cannot get any more storybook. That can't get any cooler. Honestly, I believe that would be so sick. But again, really quickly, to wrap it up, Adrian Wojnarowski did tweet this, and that's why we're covering everything else, saying that Bronny James has basically been cleared in the aftermath of his cardiac excuse me, cardiac arrest really situation that he went through. He's been cleared and he's able to per participate in the NBA draft. He'll be able to play the game of basketball at a high level. And hopefully he's drafted by a good NBA team. Hopefully things work out wherever he does go. Maybe it is Miami with the, set, or the 13th overall pick in the second round because obviously Bronny James coming in as a freshman besides the big headline that comes with his name he obviously wasn't the greatest player in the world but again like I mentioned earlier there's a lot of analysts there's a lot of insiders a lot of people that cover the game of basketball very very highly that say this is not going to be the greatest draft and again it's you got to really just take with what you got and with the players that are in this draft there's a lot of foreigners coming from France and and there's not a great point it does it seems like the foreigners coming from france are outnumbering the players coming from the ncaa programs and i feel like that's why we're getting a lot of this notion a lot of these players can hoop and a lot of these players are probably going to make for good pros doesn't seem like there's going to be a lot of great pros but again someone like Bronny james could end up playing a long really good career as not a high volume score scorer but a good three-point shooter a great wing defender and i can't wait to see how things actually play out but again that'll be it for this episode of heat digest thought it'd be a fun little video to get to you guys let me know down in the comments what you guys think about zach Eady and possibly even Bronny james ending up in a miami heat uniform and if that could possibly even bring lebron back for take two in miami but again that'll be it thank you guys for watching remember to subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys on the next one